John, and we had talked about this, John, the, uh, the, the motivators that are driving people to the cloud now, I mean, and also in the future. I mean, there, there's things that are driving you know, businesses and people to the cloud, but what's going to be driving people to the cloud in, in the future? What's going to be really motivating people? I, I think ultimately it's economics, um, especially for larger enterprises. I, I think people will, over time, understand uh, what it costs to run locally versus uh, in you know, remote uh, cloud service offering. And so I, I do believe there'll be some fundamental economic shifts uh, at play here that will drive uh, significant workloads to, to the cloud. I mean, what we're seeing today uh, with our user base, which is all VMware users at this stage, hmm. um, are really uh, test dev uh, environments, and it's less about cost uh, that's motivating folks currently and into the future as so much as it is the ability to spin up uh, temporal workloads to actually develop and then test and then tear down in a very rapid cycle of development that just speeds uh, and makes uh, development much more adaptable. And um, to the point that was being made earlier, it's, it has formed a kind of shadow IT phenomena that I believe has its own momentum and that will ultimately find um, IT trying to wrap its arms around this. And once that happens over a period of time, I do think more meaningful workloads that drive the business will ultimately um, get comfortable with the security issues we were talking about. And, and you'll see uh, those, those workloads actually start to migrate to uh, outside the domain of the, the private cloud. Mm -hmm. Kaushik, when do you see people, you know, why are people getting on board the cloud now and why will they be getting on the, in the cloud, you know, say several years from now? What will drive people in the future? Yeah, I think I think the short-term driver uh, is either agility or cost, uh, one of the two. But I think the long-term driver is going to be innovation. I think if you think about what's happening uh, and the barrier for entry for uh, for an organization, cloud significantly reduces the barrier. I mean, it, think about you know uh, you know what it would have taken a company to have a service that's. Uh, that, that is accessible to their customers even 10 years back, right? And, mm -hmm. you, you know, you had to actually roll out a data center, buy a ton of infrastructure, and, and the barriers to entry were significant. Now that, that's all gone. You can focus on on what your core competence is, what's the service you're trying to deliver, and that's why you, you see tremendous innovation both on the enterprise side and, again, consolidation on platforms. I do think innovation is going to be the key driver because what's going to happen is that the, the quality of services that's going to be available uh, to end users and enterprises uh, from the cloud are going to be fundamentally different uh, and, and in both in terms of capability, in terms of richness, in terms of experience as compared to what the enterprise would ever be able to construct or software vendors ever going to be able to produce. So I do think that it is, it is the innovation engine. And I, I, do, I do agree that you know, a lot of people are probably underestimating what, what the actual impact of this is going to be. And that's why, sort of going back to the security question, it's critical that we address the security issues uh, from an architectural perspective right now, because this, this engine is just keep going to grow and, 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 and keep growing. Yeah, you're talking about the barriers to entry. I mean, you know, Amazon Web Services, I'm sure, has been the foundation for many a startup. It's just, you know, there you do it on the month, and then suddenly you have, you have a company where 10 years ago you could not have done that. Um, Rich, Rich, what do you think? Are people... Uh, motivated to get on the web or get on the cloud, or, you know, now it's supposed to the future. What's your sense of that? Absolutely. I mean, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, economics and, you know, some of the points that, that some of my colleagues here just made all, all make a lot of sense, so I'm not going to repeat those, but I think one of the, the key things that we've learned over the last several years, since probably 2009, we'll call it, right, 2009 is the year I refer to as the, the year of the iPhone in the enterprise. That's when the iPhone mm -hmm. really started to hit the enterprise, and there right. was this big debate on who's going to win, end user, the employee, or, or IT. And I think that's largely proven itself out, right? Time and time again, we've seen that employees want to work the way that they live, which is exactly why they go out and get a, their own personal Dropbox account and start putting enterprise files onto that. Right? <laughs> which, which causes a lot of IT. problems. Yeah, exactly. I mean, IT provides SharePoint or... You know the employee can't upload a have a, a two gig two gig attachment on their on their email, and so they that's the driver for them, the trigger for them to go out and, and and use some of these other applications, right? So it's, I think you know in addition to economics and all the other points that my colleagues raised, it's the you know it's the the way that people choose to work these days, and it's even become sort of a key aspect in in recruiting, right? I see I see job postings and stuff all the time. Oh, you get you get to have a MacBook and you can bring your own devices and 
you know, it's just that sort of this merge of, of the work life and the personal life that's becoming increasingly important for everybody, but it's especially people that now are coming out of college and have grown up with, you know, iPhones and, and MacBooks and these types of things, right? right. So that's, that's not going to slow down at any point. Stu, your sense of what's going to be driving businesses uh, and people, and but also businesses, uh, businesses online, say five years from now, or driving them onto the cloud. That is. Uh, again, I go back to a couple comments I made to open up this uh, this uh, this hangout. It's very key, tangible benefits to the cloud. There's a tremendous benefit these days to renting, you know, the application you need rather than owning all the infrastructure that goes with it. There's tremendous benefit to starting small and adding capacity as you need it rather than to having to invest in all your own infrastructure to over provision. And there's tremendous benefit in having somebody else who's on the hook for the service level agreements, for the, the cranking out of new features, for the, the powering and the cooling and all those other things that go with every application. And those things don't go away. There's a reason that we don't all have wells in our backyard and electricity generators in our backyard mm -hmm. because there's some things that are just done better as a service than, than you know, individually as, a, as an individual company. Right. The, the Nicholas Carr big switch, you know, cloud computing is a utility argument. 